Are obsidian bookmarks really a feature to get excited about? Well, first of all, you know what starred notes are, right? It's where you say that this note is more important than all the other notes over here. So you click this button and you give it a star. Stars are important for Mario and stars are important for us too. But here's the problem. Starred notes are great for about the first five or 10 stars or if you're the Marvel Cinematic Universe, about the first 22 movies, but then it just becomes a problem. Too many stars. You can't keep track of them all. So each star loses the thing that made it special in the first place. That's why I wasn't excited about Obsidian's newest plugin bookmarks, which at first seemed just like star notes to me until I realized it isn't about starry notes. It's about how bookmarks allow easier ways to work more effectively. I'll show exactly what I mean. In this video, I'll show what bookmarks do, how I'm using them right now, and one trap to avoid. Okay, let's go. As a quick hello, I'm Nick Milo, and I'm here to help you improve how you go about thinking. And if you can think better, almost every single decision downstream just got a little bit easier. Part one, what do bookmarks do? Okay, diving into my obsidian, which I call the idea verse, we're going to go over what bookmarks are even about. So I'm going to twirl down Obsidian's release notes for version 1.2.2. Bookmarks, this is copied straight from them. The starred chord plugin is going away and they're introducing bookmarks. So we'll jump into both of these pretty shortly. You'll see why I don't like starred and why bookmarks is all of a sudden unlocking a lot of effective ways to work. Bookmark just about anything in Obsidian. Files, folders, graphs, searches, headings, blocks, Organize them with a much more robust bookmark view. We can reorder with drag and drop, and we can create groups that you'll see pretty quickly to organize those bookmarks into collapsible sections. So to give you an example of this right now, let's jump into this other essay I wrote as a part of a series. We were taught the rules of math and English, not of ideas. So this is pretty cool, but let's just say for whatever reason, there's something in this section that I want to come back to. I want to give it a bookmark. So how do we do that? So this is the header. And what's cool is I can, do I even have to highlight? Let's find out. So if I just right click, I have an option to bookmark this heading. That's all it takes. So let's go ahead and see it's got a path. I can give it a title and say, um, I'll say rules of ideas, clean up. Just give myself a note or something. And let's put that in progress points. And we'll get into what progress points are very shortly. But what I want you to know now is that we have a section, rules of ideas, clean up. So if I close this tab and I come over to bookmarks, I can now go immediately to clean up. And it takes us straight to the section that we wanna work on. That's pretty nice. Now, I jumped ahead a little bit to rough up the surface. Now let's step back and see exactly how we install bookmarks. It's actually going to be pretty easy. So hopefully by about the time that you're watching this recording, bookmarks will be available to everyone. Right now it's insiders only, but I'm sure that's going to change about a week or two after you see this recording. So I'm going to open up the settings and we want to just go to core plugins and just make sure you've toggled bookmarks on. You'll also notice that I have starred notes toggled on as well. I've never liked starred. I mean, look, I have basically all of the core plugins turned on, but I never liked starred notes because I felt it was a bit of a crutch. We could accomplish that and so much more through actual links. So I didn't want to kind of rely on starred notes. Bookmarks, we'll see, allows for a little bit of a better way to work and avoid a lot of the pitfalls of just over starry notes. So closing that, you can see in starred notes, I have a note that can take me to my home note. And this is a part of the light kit that you can download in the description below. Let's close this, jump back to bookmarks, and we're going to go over to bookmarks. And what you'll notice here are a lot of strange folders I've created. So you have an option. You can be on whatever page you are here, any tab, and you can go ahead and just bookmark the active tab, ignore these settings, and you'll notice that the bookmark is just like a star note right here waiting for me. However, in the next part, we're going to cover some of these interesting ways that I found to use the new bookmark plugin functionality. Part two, how I'm using bookmarks. All right, we're back onto my screen 
And what you'll notice here is I'm back in the bookmarks tab. And just so you know, we have our regular folder structure here, the access folder structure. If you're curious to learn more about this, we'll have a link up here, up here, one of those two spots, and you can learn more about the access folder structure. It's not the only way to do linked based thinking. It's a really good way to get started though, and just make sure that you have your bases covered. Now let's go back to the bookmarks tab. And these are some of the more interesting ways I've so far thought about using bookmarks. And I wanna walk you through each one real fast. So. I'm playing off of bookmarks and I have map marks. So let's jump into map marks to begin with. These are those high level maps of content. In case I just want the fastest access possible, this gives and reliable access. I can go to the bookmarks tab and find what I'm looking for. So a really great example here is the light kit. I can click right here and I'm at the map of content for the light kit. And I can go back and make sure all this stuff is good, whatever I wanted to do here. Same thing for flight school. I can go to the arrival page and be off to the races. We also have, I was using this for Canvas. So you can use the Canvas note and then you can bookmark that and you can throw that into. Let's see what that would look like. So this is a weekly schedule I was playing around with. It's a little tiny on the screen. We don't care about the details right now. What we do care about are these three dots. So if we click on the three dots, go ahead and bookmark You'll see the same options here. You can fill in whatever you want to, save. And since it's recognized, it's already a part of my bookmark collection, it went ahead and updated the existing bookmark. Now I really don't like that name because that means nothing. So I'll go back, three dots, bookmark, and I'll paste in the old one. And that's looking pretty good, right? So map marks, high level marks. Now I prefer to have a home note. I prefer to have our maps of content. They're based on links and they're extremely reliable, they're amazingly future-proof, and they help you navigate your knowledge in the moment and in the years to come. So maps of content are the most important. Hopefully we link to another video for that as well, but it doesn't hurt to have a couple that you can just go to bookmarks and find really fast. Moving on, what do we have? We have time marks. So under time marks, we might have, if you do some sort of daily note workflow, you might have a specific daily note that you just wrote a lot in. Maybe you were journaling in it in the morning in kind of like a first light, last light workflow, or you just found a bunch of daily sparks and you were writing all these daily sparks out. So for me, this one's pretty simple. For an example, I just wrote something about the doorway effect that I found was really interesting. And so I linked to it so I can come back to it. And this other Obsidian plugin actually that I thought was really cool and I wanted to explore so this is basically me using that temporary sticky note for this. So I can come back to it and do whatever processing or sense making I need to with those notes. Now, graph marks are where it gets kind of interesting. So we have a basic global graph. This is the big graph of mine. I think it's handling around 5,000 notes. So it's still doing pretty, pretty good job there. But everyone's complaint, oh, the global graph, it doesn't allow me to do what I want to and local graph. Well, with bookmarks, it allows the global graph to really flex its muscles for us because we can do all of the work one time and then save that view, save that search. I'll give you an example of this. One, I can just change some colors. So now we've added a few colors. It doesn't look too different, but here's the one. Let's imagine I want to work on a new piece of content. Let's call it an expression. And one of those expressions is going to be ranked higher than the rest. So in each of these notes, I can now color code and see at a distance what I might want to look at. And sometimes there are some interesting connections that form and that can really inform what I choose to work on or say, I'm going to do this one first, but it connects to that one. So be mindful that these things do connect. And that's where we get the advantage of being able to see the graph view. Now, for the most part, most of them won't connect, but even here we see that the grappling hook that I was just talking about connects to this video. So if I ever get to the graphing hook, I'm totally going to remember that I need to mention bookmarks because there's something cool I want to share about that when it comes to hotkeys. Okay, moving on. Now we are working on a video that's ranked five and it's we're working on this one right here. So I can hold command on Mac, control on Windows, and I get the pop-up preview. And look at this. I'm looking at the note that we're working on. It's over here. So the graph view, with this saved search, that's all it is. It's a saved search. It's just of the graph. I've bookmarked it. It's my graph mark. 
and it's really helpful for me to see what I might want to work on. And I've color coded all the different rankings here. Now I'm going to include a few of these examples in the next version of Obsidian Flight School. You can see the link in the description below. And a bit of a side note, if you're wondering why I love Obsidian so much, it's because I've realized that this single tool compels me to think better, to generate more prolifically, and to do it in a secure and future-proof way. And getting faster at this one tool unlocks all sorts of opportunities for thinking better and doing better work, whatever that means for you. And if you want to allow Obsidian to supercharge your thinking, definitely check out Obsidian Flight School in the description below. It'll help you start working closer to the speed of thought. So moving on, we're going to go from graph marks to search marks. So this is kind of interesting. I've saved a search. So search is over here. Let's say I want to search for prolific, which I've already done. And I want to show less context and spell prolific correctly and collapse all the results. So right away that we can see that there are 84 results. And next to those results, you'll notice that there is that there are the three dots again. Go ahead, click on that, and then you can bookmark that saved search. So under my search marks, my saved searches that have been bookmarked, you'll find that prolific is right here. So I can click on that and immediately I can reaccess those results. Now um, let's also do a little test here. And I have not done this ahead of time, but I'm curious who I have more mentions of. Mihai, Chiksen Mihai at 95 results. Let me go ahead and bookmark that. And as I bookmark this search, I'm going to make sure I click here and choose a group to put it in. In this case, search marks. Let's compare Mihai with Carl Sagan. So I'll do Sagan. 106, okay, so Carl wins this bout. Uh, this will change over time, but kind of neat. Search marks and it's saved. So now for whatever reason, if I was doing research on those two people, and if anyone's been watching my channel or has been a part of the workshop, you definitely know I like to mention these two a few different times. So now I've saved searches for them. Okay, now for those who are trying to get things done, to accomplish things, we have progress points. We already saw one example of this. I can go immediately to rules of ideas and say, this is the section I still need to clean up. And I bounce immediately to that subheader. Very nice. I have a couple others. Let's imagine I was going through flight school and, and the last place I left off was before the simulation on getting better with working with text. Okay, great. Or here's one. We did a little live thing called how to work a book. And I was really happy with some of the stuff I didn't even show, but I did for my personal benefit of how to keep track of book notes, but the big, massive, awesome context around it to truly understand what the author was bringing to it. So I want to make sure that I update my personal book template with some of the evolutions I've made here. We can do this with tags. However, if you have a few that you really wanna keep at a high level and make sure you don't forget, maybe you throw them as a bookmark, as a progress point. Just an idea, I don't know. Maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't. Now, sometimes we just have this feeling, something is truly, deeply resonating, vibrating with us, sparking with us. Those are virgins points, disturbances in the force where there's a tremendous amount, yes, it's a Star Wars term, tremendous amount of energy has gathered, right? It's like this, this nexus point. So I wanna capture that and make sure I can jump into that. I don't want to show you this one because I don't think it's ready for, for the public's eyes, but that's where I can then go and then work on that thing. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll do a sneak peek here. Great, great, great. Yeah, so I have a, something I want to do, a, an ultimate guide for everyone to really understand the, the, the value behind linking your thinking as simply as possible. And there are a lot of great ideas in here. So that's what I have in this area. And then last, let's close this one. Hemingway points. So some of us might be familiar with the very popular writing style of Ernest Hemingway. And one of the things Hemingway said he did was he would stop mid-sentence when he still felt like he was having a lot of energy with a piece of writing. And then he would pick that place up in the morning knowing that he would not be stuck, but they could just hit the ground running. So I might have a specific sort of bookmark. Um, if we go back to this video, you can see that I've bookmarked this video. I've also bookmarked the hook for uh, the grappling hook video that I'm talking about, which would have a reference to an old regular Nintendo game, Bionic Commando. So that's my hook. That's my Hemingway point, because I know I can hit the ground running 
with what I had in mind here. So just to recap, there are a lot of different ways you can use bookmarks. It's not just the typical, hey, I want to star that note, but I want to leave you with this. This is a first take. The bookmarks plugin, it's very new. And my examples are just to get you thinking. I want to show you what's possible, but whatever I showed you, I'm sure will change or evolve as I find what works best for my workflow. I'm really curious which one resonates the most with you, or even better, how are you already using Obsidian's Bookmarks plugin? Let us know in the comments below. Part three, the fault in our stars. The trap is this, using bookmarks to temporarily star notes. While this is helpful in theory, it suffers from that pollution effect. The more you add, the less shiny each one becomes until you can't even remember why you starred them in the first place. What's cool about the Bookmarks plugin is that both beginners and advanced users can use it right away. Beginners, you can use it as a way to simply star a few notes, just not too many. And advanced users, you can use it in all the ways we already showed above and probably a lot more. Even though I wasn't excited about Obsidian's Bookmarks plugin initially, I now recognize it's not about starring notes. It's about allowing bookmarks to help you do your best work more effectively. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe even. That would be really nice. And until next time, stay connected.